So uh, you would have some some equation of motion. It would be the same, and this would give me. So that would be my field equation. Well, uh, sorry. I mean, this would be so this would be my uh, fermionic field, and we would take it to be Majorana spinner, this spinner, which is real. Here also we had the advantage that this X field is real. Okay, it's a real scalar field on the two-dimensional board sheet. This is also a field on the two-dimensional board sheet. It's a function of the sigma alpha, sigma zero, sigma one, or sigma plus, sigma minus. And here uh no i am sorry it cannot be it is either this or these are dirac equations what i wrote down was uh this okay so they are the dirac equations okay i am sorry uh what i had written down was the the was the expression for the the Lagrangian, which was then plus what is this? Oh, that is also that was also wrong. Del plus x, del plus x mu, del minus x mu. Okay, so what I had written that was incorrect. This is correct. So we will have these equations, these will be. Dirac equations. Okay, and uh, let me not even write this actually. It will be technically correct, but these are technically correct. Okay, because Dirac equations are first order equations. Uh, let me not go into that question. So, uh, for the superstring theory, we would have Dirac equations and their solutions. So, we would make expansions for sine. And they would involve also Fourier modes, and those Fourier modes would be fermionic in nature. And they would obey Fermi Dirac statistics and the corresponding anti commutation relations. Alright. So it's comparative. That is the, that is the purpose of uh, recapping some of the basics related to the bosonic string theory. Okay. Because we want to make a comparative study. And we would leave out many derivations for that. I would refer to the earlier lectures. Okay, they are also on the. Yeah. So, <clears throat> all right. So I think uh, we we now come back to this. As you can see, is. Uh, line bottom equation for the massless fields. Okay, the x mu are the massless scalar fields, and so uh, this is expected as to be this equation. So, what we do now is we want to making use of the light front coordinates. We would like to split this into, into two parts. The x mu x mu tau sigma i could write it as x mu l which is a function of plus x mu r which is a so this sigma plus is tau plus sigma and sigma minus is tau so, uh, this is in general for any wave equation, we can split the solution of the wave equation into two parts consisting of two waves, one moving to the left, one moving to the right and for short they are called left movers and right movers. The point is one of them depends only on sigma plus. And one of them depends only on sigma minus. 
okay so sigma minus is tau minus sigma so it's a right mover this is uh, tau plus sigma so it's a left mover and we would use uh, the convention uh, that here for this i would use alpha u k for this i would use beta mu k if i make a mistake you could tell me catch me and so that i get the direction so this is one thing that i can split my solution into left movers and right movers second step is in general for any partial differential equations from the theory of partial differential equations we know that we can make fourier expansions for the solutions okay and the simplest Fourier expansions are the plane wave expansions. You can <coughs> different other kinds involving cylindrical waves, spherical waves, and whatever you like. But the simplest is the plane wave expansion. So <coughs> here, uh, let me let me write down these two expressions: x mu and is 1 half x mu n plus 1 half l s square sigma plus or let me better write here tau plus sigma for a different region so that you can do mental calculation p l mu plus k uh, not equal to 0 but k going from minus infinity to plus infinity 1 by k times alpha mu k times e to the power minus i k let me write tau plus sigma but we remind ourselves that this is uh, this is also sigma plus and x mu r is 1 half x mu r plus tau minus sigma p r mu plus uh, iota n s y is equal to 2 summation over k in the same manner k not equal to 0 but k goes from minus infinity to 1 by k and here i write beta mu k e to the power minus i k tau minus so. okay so uh, the, the total solution is of course x mu is equal to x mu n plus x mu r. Okay. x mu n plus x mu r. Correct? So, <coughs> this total solution would be, I would not write down fully, but one half of x mu n plus x mu r plus 1 half ls square into sum of these two terms, okay, plus a mode. So, without writing these expressions for them, I leave it up. Very soon, these uh, various conditions on our field x mu, capital X mu, would relate some of these things like this and this, and p r mu, and p l mu, and so on. Okay, if we assume P L mu to be equal to P R mu, then I could of course write it down immediately that if this is equal to this, then this term would drop out and I would have a term twice tau into P mu. Then let me not write here L or R or L or R. Where I am assuming this to be equal to this. But it may or may not be equal to. So uh, therefore, 
I just leave it open, okay? Be, be some, some of these people, that's enough. Now, physically, what is the meaning of all this? This object, some of this, these two terms, this represents the center of mass coordinate. of the history, center of mass coordinate of the history and this sum of these two whatever it is would represent center of mass momentum of the history. Actually, if you solve an equation of the type x double dot mu equal to 0, just this, it would imply u x mu equal to some x mu plus uh, a mu tau. Okay? Just uh, equation of motion of a free particle. So, you integrate it twice. You integrate it first, you get a mu. You integrate it second time, you get p mu into tau plus another constant. So, x mu, p mu are essentially constants of integrations here, but physically they represent the center of mass coordinate and center of mass momentum of the history. So, the space time, within the space time, the string moves around with this sum of these two terms, this plus this and 